As we prepare to recall the last days of our Lord's life on earth, let us remember before God this night, this world, for which our Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died. Let us call to mind all those who suffer, all those who are oppressed, and all those who are forgotten. And most of all, let us remember what God calls us to do as people of faith. From Vox.com. An estimated one million people have already fled Russia's war on Ukraine, and many European Union nations are welcoming Ukrainians with open arms. But non-Ukrainian citizens face an uncertain immediate future. Some have had difficulty trying to flee, and those who've managed to cross the border may not be able to find refuge in European Union, at least not for the long term. That has put foreigners who adopted Ukraine as their home in a difficult situation, one aggravated by longstanding political and social factors, including the continuing embrace of Cold War policy, the inherent limits of the European Union's will to welcome non-Europeans, and pervasive, though not necessarily overt, racism. The EU and United Nations have been adamant that anyone who wants to leave Ukraine should be allowed to do so. But on the ground, a number of non-Ukrainians of color, including Africans, Afghans, and Yemenis, have reported facing discrimination while waiting in line at the border and while trying to access critical resources. While official statistics on the number of non-Ukrainian refugees facing such issues haven't yet been compiled, the sheer volume of troubling reports has led to rebukes from the United Nations, diplomats, and refugee officials. The EU recently issued a framework for member countries to process non-Ukrainian refugees. All member states agreed on Thursday to allow some non-Ukrainians to automatically obtain asylum through the same pathway as Ukrainian citizens. But it's not clear just how many non-Ukrainians will have access to the program and which will need to return to their countries of origin. For some, that uncertainty, as well as the prospect of having to go back to their home countries, is daunting. I thought my whole life would be in Ukraine. My family doesn't know who I am anymore. One medical student from Morocco, whose name is being withheld to protect their safety, told Vox. Morocco isn't, safe, isn't as safe as everyone thinks, especially when it comes to expressing political opinions. It's not yet clear whether Morocco will be deemed risky enough for that student to gain access to the newly announced asylum program and that lack of clarity is a reminder that the EU's current open arms approach to Ukrainian refugees is an exception to the continent's refugee policy, not an indication of a paradigm shift. After a record 1.3 million people sought asylum in Europe in 2015 alone, Europe became more hostile to people seeking refugees, refuge at its doorstep, including Syrians, Afghans, Iraqis, and Sub-Saharan Africans. Having lived for a time in Ukraine isn't likely to shield anyone from that reality. Race is certainly, not a, race is certainly a factor in Europe's stance toward Ukrainian refugees. Countries have been more willing to accept refugees who are perceived as white than those who are not. But it's not the only factor. Unlike other refugee crises in the past, Russia's assault on Ukraine involves geopolitics that go beyond the immediate conflict. While everyone fleeing Ukraine has encountered long lines at the borders, often without adequate access to basic necessities and services, some non-Ukrainians have faced particularly poor treatment. Reports in include African refugees being pushed to the back of the lines at the border by Ukrainian soldiers or by others trying to flee. Some were even reportedly turned away at hotels in cities close to the Polish border. 
It was just a blanket bias against foreigners to favor Ukrainians and allow them to cross the border and access help first, Azia, a Kenyan national who is studying medicine in Ukraine, told Vox. And it's not just an issue faced by black refugees. There have been reports of Afghans being turned away and advocates have shared narratives of Yemeni students facing extreme violence. Diplomats and world leaders have spoken out against these incidents and cited global commitments to the European Union must follow during times of crisis. But for many migration advocates and people trying to flee Ukraine, these difficulties reflect broader issues with how Europe treats migrants. It's clear that race and identity have affected Europe's response to this refugee crisis. At least one European political leader has stressed that they feel Ukrainians' perceived whiteness, their tendency towards Christianity, and Europeanness make them more palatable than past refugee populations. These people are Europeans, Bulgarian Prime Minister Kirill Petkov said last week. These people are intelligent. They are educated people. This is not the refugee wave we have been used to. People we were not sure about their identity, people with unclear pasts who could have been, who could have even been terrorists. A reading from Leviticus. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall not cheat in measuring length, weight, or quantity. You shall have honest balances, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest tin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall keep all my statues and all my ordinances and observe them. I am the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, in Jesus you became a stranger in your own land and a refugee who fled your own home. May we always see your face in the foreigner and the immigrant, and may we welcome them as we would your Son, through him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading, The Meaning of a Stolen Diaper, from New Yorker, March 11, 2022, by Jessica Winter. What are we looking at when we look at a stolen bag of Huggies? Last month, the New York Police Department verified Twitter account shared the news that officers in the Bronx had arrested 12 individuals following an enforcement initiative targeting shoplifters, adding, the arrests made led to the closure of 23 warrants and the recovery of $1,800 worth of merchandise. Accompanying the tweet were photographs of three policemen and a carefully arranged display of the stolen items, which included bar soap, laundry detergent, cough medicine, baby lotion, baby wipes, and several boxes and bags of diapers. The tweet was later deleted, but among those who shared screenshots were Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the congresswoman who represents part of the Bronx and Queens. It is much easier to frame people who steal baby formula and medicine as monsters to be jailed than acknowledge our politics and economic priorities 
create conditions where people steal baby formula to survive, she wrote. New York City's crime statistics for February are striking. Every major crime category saw an increase, with robbery and grand larceny up by 8% as compared with February 2020, and burglary up 31%. The year-over-year -year crime stats are more alarming but somewhat misleading, as both crime and enforcement rates were dramatically down in early 2021. Several public defenders told me that while some people who are arrested are petty larceny charges, are stealing baby products and other household items for themselves, others do so intending to sell the goods, and sometimes they steal over and over again. Such a scenario is less sympathetic than that of, say, a frantic mother driven to shoplifting pampers. But public defenders point out it's no less a mar marker of poverty. The guy is selling the diapers to get the same thing that anyone else who is struggling, Jonathan Sussman, a criminal defense attorney who spent seven years as a public defender in Manhattan, said. It's food, money, rent, money, a metro card. He's not going to the club with that money. Tina Lagono, go, the attorney in charge of the criminal defense practice at the Legal Aid Society, which, which represents some of the defendants in the Bronx enforcement operation, told me, when it's diapers, it's not about or criminality or public safety. It's about desperation. The black market for diapers and other baby products thrives because so many people can't afford over-the-counter prices for them. Diapers and wipes cannot be purchased with food stamps or other welfare benefits, and the expense is grinding source of stress for families in poverty. During the pandemic, the number of families who couldn't pay for diapers shot up across the country. The Hope Line, a community aid organization based in the Bronx, was distributing an average of 14,000 diapers per month in 2019. In 2020, the average spiked to 22,000, and in 2021, it climbed as high as 30,000. The lines today are through the roof, Maria Clintron, the organization's executive director, told me when we spoke recently. The community that Clintron serves also represents the target market for those who steal baby products with an intent to resell them. A lot of parents might go to the local bodega or to a neighbor and buy those little off-brand packets of diapers because that's all they can afford, Clintron said. The bodega might actually be part of these shoplifting rings. Unfortunately, sometimes the parent is getting something cheap on the low. Then the baby gets a rash or the diaper leaks, and the parent either needs to get more diapers or to keep the baby in a dirty diaper. We have seen a lot of that happening, and it gets, and it gets people that much closer to taking the next step of shoplifting, she added. So long as there is poverty, there will be crimes of poverty. Misdemeanors, in particular, nonviolent offenses such as petty larceny and low-level drug possession strongly correlate with poverty, homelessness, and unstable housing, substance abuse, and behavioral health issues. The number of homeless New Yorkers is 16% higher than it was a decade ago, and it includes tens of thousands of children. The pandemic also precipitated a dire psychiatric crisis among the city's homeless population. More than 40% of New Yorkers are considered to be at or near the poverty line, and according to the Center on Poverty and the Social Policy at Columbia University, the end of the child tax credit has plummeted 3.7 million children into poverty nationwide. Cintron of, the Clint Cintron of the Hope Line said that the circumstances for clients are more challenging now than they were in the first and darkest stages of the pandemic. Back in 2020, we got more grants, thankfully, and more people were becoming interested in what we were doing and sending donations, she said. And more of our families, not everybody, were getting a boost. The government made stimulus payments and extended unemployment benefits. Families received SNAP, got supplemental benefits, eviction stopped. But even then, she went on, I knew that once we got out of the cloud of COVID and people were back to reality, it was going to be a much harder time. Right now, people are having a shock to the system. People are falling behind. A reading from Deuteronomy. 
You shall not withhold the wages of poor and needy laborers, whether Israelites or aliens who reside in your land in one of your towns. You shall pay them their wages daily before sunset, because they are poor and their livelihood depends on them. Otherwise they might cry out to the Lord against you, and you would incur guilt. You shall not deprive a resident alien or an orphan of justice. You shall not take a widow's garment in pledge. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore I command you to do this. When you reap your harvest in your field, and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be left for the alien, the orphan, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertakings. When you beat your olive trees, do not strip what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of the vineyard, do not glean what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I am commanding you to do this. Let us pray. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, among, upon those who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us and help us to eliminate cruelty and injustice wherever we find it. Strengthen those who seek equality for all. Grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the abundance of this land. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Tyson Foods fires seven plant managers over bedding ring from NPR.org. Tyson Foods has fired seven managers at an Iowa pork plant after investing allegations they bet on how many workers there would get sick from the coronavirus. The company, one of the lar country's largest meat suppliers, launched an independent investigation into the complaints last month, suspending without pay the managers allegedly involved. Former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder led the investigation. The behaviors exhibited by these individuals do not represent the Tyson core values, which is why we took immediate and appropriate action to get to the truth, Tyson Foods President and CEO Dean Banks said in a statement Wednesday. Now that the investigation has concluded, we are taking action based on the findings. More than 1,000 employees at the plant in Waterloo have been infected by the virus, and at least six have died. The virus spread across the community. Black Hawk County has seen some 12,000 cases and 193 deaths. Many of the plant's 2,800 employees are immigrants and refugees. Black Hawk County Sheriff Tony Thompson visited the plant along with health officials in April. He told the New York Times that working conditions there, workers crowded elbow to elbow, not wearing face coverings, shook me to the core. Thompson and other officials lobbied for Tyson to close the plant, but the company refused. It was around this time, according to a complaint from the family of one employee who died, that the manager of the Waterloo facility organized a cash buy-in, winner-take-all betting pool for supervisors and managers to wager how many employees would test positive for COVID-19. According to the lawsuit filed by the family of Isidro Fernandez, who died in April, Tyson had employees move between a different Iowa plant where an outbreak was occurring and the Waterloo plant and did not adequately test or quarantine them before they entered the Waterloo facility. The lawsuit also alleges that supervisors outwardly denied there were cases of the virus at the Waterloo plant, but began avoiding the plant floor because they were afraid of contracting the virus. The supervisors also reportedly told workers they had a responsibility to keep working 
in order to ensure Americans don't go hungry. The complaint says Tyson offered $500 thank you bonuses to employees who showed up for every scheduled shift for three months, a policy that the plaintiffs argue incentivized sick workers to keep working. The Tyson spokesman did not confirm whether such incentives were offered or respond directly to other allegations from the pending litigation. We are saddened by the loss of any Tyson team member and sympathize with their families. Our top priority is the health and safety of our workers, and we've implemented a host of protective measures at our facilities that meet or exceed CDC and OSHA guidance for preventing COVID-19, Mickelson said, pointing to investments the company has made in testing, temperature scanners, workplace dividers, and other safety measures. Tyson eventually announced on April 22nd it would suspend operations at the plant. It reopened two weeks later. A reading from Amos. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate, and it may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will, remain, will be gracious in the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, in all the squares there shall be wailing, and in all the streets they shall say, Alas, alas. They shall call the farmers to mourning, and those skilled in lamentation to wailing. In all the vineyards there shall be wailing, for I will pass through the midst of you, says the Lord. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Let us pray. God of the nations whose sovereign rule brings justice and peace, have mercy on our broken and divided world. Grant to our governments and to all who serve in public life wisdom and skill, imagination and empathy. Protect them from corruption and selfishness. Help us to commit ourselves to the common good, that our land may be a secure home for all people through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen.
A reading <clears throat> from Lamentations. Is it nothing to you, all who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. My eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churns, my bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people, because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. They cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine, as they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. What can I say for you? To what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? To what can I liken you that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion? For vast as a sea is your ruin, who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes, but have seen oracles for you that are false and misleading. All who pass along the way clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their heads at daughter Jerusalem. Is this a city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of all the earth? Let us pray. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows, that we may be strengthened to follow where you would have us go, so that we may have peace in your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, you open your hand, and all the earth is filled with good things. But we have cried out against you, saying, What shall we eat, and what shall we drink? Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, you have said, In returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and trust shall be your strength. But we have shouted, No, we shall speed upon horses, we will ride upon swift steeds. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, you have said, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. But we have said, when will the Sabbath be over that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals? Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, we have come before you with thousands of rams and ten thousand rivers of oil, and we have caused you to cry out, O oh my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. 